Uh, we are studying the book of the Revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ. It is the last book in the Bible. It is an inspired book. Uh, it is not a leftover. It is a termination uh, it, uh, of, of God has fully said it, and, uh, and, and we fully believe it. And all the people said? Uh, we're studying uh, Lesson 13 at this moment, and it has to do with uh, the two final harvest. Now, you could say the two feasts of the book of the Revelation of Jesus Christ, because there are two great harvest times in the book of the Revelation. They're so opposite, so completely opposite of each other, and uh, uh, it's, uh, it's amazing to know that we're going to have two great feast times in the book of the Revelation. Uh, Christ called the, the Son of Man, wearing a golden crown and holding a sharp sickle uh, to reap the final harvest of the earth. That will be the last mighty revival to take place on planet Earth. It has not taken place as of this moment, but you could see the beginnings of it, I think. For example, in Africa, and for a further example, in China, uh, you can see the beginnings of it <coughs> that, that are taking place today. Uh, the fourth angel, in your second paragraph, proclaims at the time, that it is time for the harvest to be reaped. We're, we're glad for an angelic messenger that knows the times and the seasons, that uh, it is now time for the harvest to be reaped. And uh, the angel held a, a sharp sickle in his hand uh, to, to cut the harvest of the earth. The difference in this angel and in the Lord Jesus Christ who was seated upon a cloud is that the angel uh, comes to proclaim judgment upon the earth. And Christ came to bring that last full and mighty revival of the ingathering of multiplied millions of people into the kingdom of God just to show the devil he can do it. And there will be a mighty outpouring of his spirit. You, you and I are very fortunate to be alive because in the 18th century, 17th century, 16th century, they read it, but they couldn't see it, you see. You and I not only read it, we see it. And, and so it's good to be alive. Say, it's good to be alive. Be alive. And uh, we are glad that we are part of that, that, that final gathering of immortal souls into the kingdom of God. It says, And the sixth angel came from the altar crying to the angel with the sharp sickle. You'll notice that, uh, uh, that Christ had a golden crown, and he had a sharp sickle, but it was for a different purpose than this angel that is coming. And, and he shall gather the clusters of the vine. The vine speaks of wrath and of judgment on the earth. In the first harvest, they gathered the wheat, uh, and that's the speaking to us. <coughs> that's speaking to us of the immortal souls, people. Uh, they gathered the wheat. Uh, this harvest is of, of the vine, uh, speaking about the grapes of wrath and the time of judgment. Uh, verse 19 says that the angel thrust in his sickle, and he. And he cast forth his sickle and cast the, uh, the harvest into the wine press of the wrath of God. That is the, what we call the time of the great tribulation, when man shall have the most severe moments that earth has ever known. <clears throat> you may think Rwanda's bad. Wait until this thing hits the world. And uh, you say, will we, we be here? No, I don't think so. I don't think the Bible indicates you will. The bride of Christ, you don't take your bride and pull it through every slop hole in town before you marry her, you know. And it, it wouldn't be the purpose of Jesus to take the bride of Christ who is so beautiful and who's 
is so lovely and redeemed by the precious blood and drag her through, through the judgments of the book of Revelation. There are two kinds of judgments. There's the judgment when, when, when men persecute others. And then there's the judgment that where God in his cosmic fury brings problems and, uh, uh, to the earth like earthquakes and plague and things of this nature uh, that covers so many millions of people at, at one time. And so we have here the, the two final end gatherings, one for God, the first one, and one for satanic forces who refuse, absolutely refuse to serve the living God. You've got millions of people living right now that they will not serve the good God. They don't want to serve him. They're, they're, there's rebellion in their hearts bigger than that was in Adam in the Garden of Eden. They just don't want to serve him. And those people will have to be judged for their, for their sins and also for, uh, for their hatred against God. And all the people said, in verse 20, it, it says uh, that they, at, at this time, uh, the last great battle of Armageddon, where blood will flow to the horses' bridles by the space of a thousand and six furlongs, about 200 miles. That would mean all the way from Jerusalem clear up into northern Galilee. Blood will flow. Uh, and it says, it, it says to a horse's bridles, uh, the bridles of a horse hang down beside his head and they're about three foot off the ground. And so uh, blood and water mixed together should just flow uh, for 200 miles. The world has never seen anything like it. But when millions, when millions are, are slain in the last great battle, the Battle of Armageddon, they will see this. These two harvests are, are, are the harvest of life and the harvest of death. And, and the world is not getting to be a better place. You don't have to have very much uh, thought on that to know that this world is not getting to be a better place. Uh, it is headed for the bloodiest war the world has ever known. Now, uh, I was just noticing this week that they have set aside, I think it's several, several billion dollars for new prison houses. I said, isn't that something? They spend millions and hundreds of millions uh, for, for jails and won't even let the Bible inside the front door of the school or the Ten Commandments be on the wall. That would keep people out of those places, you see. But the, 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 it shows you the thinking. If, if you're going to follow the thinking of man today, you're going to miss God 100%. That's all. Because the thinking of man today is not a spiritual thought. Uh, it, it's, it's, it's like the ancient Greeks that man is his own God and that man should live the way he wants to live. He should satisfy the lusts of his own flesh and not be bothered with anybody else. And so that's the kind of world that we have come to be in it at this time. Open your Bibles there to Revelation chapter 14, and we will begin reading at verse 14. I looked, and behold, a white cloud, and upon the cloud was, was set one like unto the Son of Man. As I've told you before, 78 times in the New Testament, Jesus called himself the Son of Man. And in the, in the Old Testament, he is called the, the, the Son of Man in the book of Daniel and in other books. And, and now he calls himself that. Now in the book of Revelation, he is called that. You say, why would they call him the Son of Man? Because he was born on this earth just like you were born on this earth. And he knows all of the human tragedies and sorrows uh, just as well as any person that, who ever lived. And, and so therefore, uh, he is a son of humans. He is a son of man. And in doing this, he identifies himself with our sorrows, our problems, our heartaches, whatever we, whatever we go through. He says, yeah, I've been there, I've been there, I know what you're talking about. And, and so he is the son of man, having, having on his head a golden crown and in his hand a sharp sickle. That's for the harvest. And another angel came out of the temple. This is the second harvest. 
crying with a loud voice, saying to him that sat on the cloud, Thrust in thy sickle, and reap, for the time is come for thee to reap, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. Now, uh, that would take a lot of thought and prayer uh, to see exactly what we see here, uh, that this great harvest is going to come. I hope it hits this country. I, I hope it hits a country like, like England. They don't go to church. There are more Muslims in their mosque on Friday than there are Christians in the churches of England on a Sunday. You can go to England, cry your eyeballs out, as you drive along the countryside, you see not one or two, dozens of churches that no longer are used for churches. We, I saw one uh, that was used for spiritist headquarters. The devil's headquarters was inside the old church building there. And they, they, they filled them with hay. They filled them with all kinds of foodstuffs, uh, using them as storage places. And you look and say, isn't that, a, isn't that an amazing thing with the people of this community going to hell, and the only church they have here, they filled it with hay. Just to be sure humans couldn't get in, they filled it with hay. And you take in a, in a place like Norway and, and, and Sweden, I've forgotten the, the exact percentages, but possibly less than 10% ever go in sight of a Christian church. And yet in spite of that, we've got good, good full gospel churches functioning in those countries. You know, God is not a loser. He's a winner. And he finally totally wins. I, I can you say amen? But he say, it, it says here, put your sickle in. Uh, this is speaking to Christ. For the time is come for thee to reap. There's going to be a time of mighty revival upon this earth that will shake this world from corner to corner. A time of revival. And I have a, a, a deep feeling that that, what are you going to think and what are you going to say when a hundred million Chinese come to the Lord Jesus Christ? You, you know, you, you, all you say, that, that's, that's too many. Well, they got a billion people there. They got a billion people there. And a billion is a hundred million, you see. Uh, and, and so then they've got uh, 200 million besides that, that that are there, maybe 300 million people that are there. God can have revival this world has never witnessed before. And I can tell you personally, I have seen more dedication among those Chinese people than I have seen anywhere. Weeping, crying, uh, reaching up for God, reaching out to God, uh, asking for miracles, pleading with God to pour out His Spirit <coughs> upon that land. And, and so, the, there are places today where the beginning of this revival has already started, and uh, I just want to see the rest of it. How about you? So he said, thrust on your sickle. The time has come for you to reap, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. Isn't that amazing? The harvest of the earth is ripe. People were ready to turn from the devil and turn from sin and turn from corruption to live to serve the living God. The harvest was ripe. And I believe that ripeness is upon us right now. And then in verse 16, if you have your Bible open, <coughs> and, and he that sat on the cloud thrust in his sickle to the earth, and the earth was reaped. That harvest will come. It may not, it may not last over six months. It, it may be a short thing, but so mighty until all they can do is carry news about it. They won't, they won't be able to, uh, <clears throat> they, they won't be able to do much about it. It'll come so fast and be gone so quick till they won't know what hit it. And, and then, then all the righteous shall go will be with Christ in, in heaven. And then he says, and another angel. Now this is a, a change of picture. This verse 17. Another angel came out of the temple which is in heaven, having a sharp sickle. You know, they look a little bit alike. <clears throat> and another angel came from the altar of God, which had power over fire. And he cried with a loud cry to him that sat on with a sharp sickle, saying, uh, Thrust in your sickle and gather in your 
the clusters of the vine. As I said a few moments ago, notice the change from wheat bringing in the sheaves to the vine bringing in the judgment. So they, 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 they might seem similar if you don't read it carefully. They are not similar at all. For her grapes are fully ripe. I, I, if I know anything, brother, this world's ready for judgment. This world is ready. It's in the most terrible state uh, of rebellion against holiness, uh, against righteousness, you know, uh, against everything that's good. They, they, uh, they're, they're against it. And so this world is ripe for the judgment that will come. And the angel thrust in his sickle to the earth and, and, and uh, gathered the vine of the earth and cast it into the great winepress of the wrath of God. So we have now come to not blessing, not revival, but to the wrath of God uh, we, we have now come to. And the winepress was trodden without the city. That's Jerusalem, of course. And the blood came out of that wine press, even under the horses' bridles, by the space of a thousand and six hundred furlongs, about two hundred miles. Now let's have a look at them, please. The harvest are totally immortal souls. We're not talking about wheat, we're not talk, talking about grapes. They're immortal souls. And this makes them absolutely important because we're dealing with immortality. And the first harvest would be a harvest of great love, where God will, that loved the world, gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So the first harvest is a harvest of the great love of God. You say, people living at that time, could they get in the harvest? Sure they could. When God says, come unto me, all you that labor in heaven later, and I'll give you rest, that means just exactly what it says. And the only way to miss God is to say, I don't want to come. You've got friends that don't want to be saved. You know you have. You've got people that hate you because you go to church. It's going to get worse and worse. It's not going to get better and better. And, and so what we have to do is say, whatever others do, I'm going to be ready. And all the people said, Oh, no matter what others do, I am going uh, to be ready. So he cast in his sharp sickle, and there he, he brought the mighty harvest. And now let's have a look at it. He says, he looked, they had the ability and the leadership uh, for the conditions that existed. That was the Lord Jesus. A white cloud upon this cloud was the Son of Man. Uh, Christ called himself the Son of Man. It says here 79 times. I missed it by one, evidently. Uh, his head uh, had upon it a golden crown, no longer crowned with thorns as it had been. Uh, he, has, and, and he has a right to reign because he's got a crown on his head. Uh, he has a right to be king of kings and lord of lords. And his, his hand holds a sharp sickle. It, it's a harvest instrument. A sickle is used just, just for harvest. And this, this sharp sickle was ready uh, for use, and it, and it, and it speaks to us uh, when, it, when it comes to uh, uh, the vine. It speaks to us of judgment. And when it comes to the wheat, it speaks to us of salvation. In the same chapter, verse 15, it says, An angel came out of the temple crying with a loud voice to the one that sat on the, th says, thrust in your sickle. Now, you, maybe it don't, you know, move you much, but almost every word in the Bible moves me, you know. Uh, and uh, here's an angel telling Jesus what to do is what I mean. Uh, here's an angel saying, put it in there. Uh, you, you say, how could an angel do that? He just got the word from the throne and he was delivering it. He was delivering the word from the throne, uh, from, from the Father. And so he said, the harvest of the earth is ripe. And, and so we, 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 we see it take place. An angel or messenger came from the temple crying with a loud voice to Jesus. It is amazing that Christ is willing even to listen to a created creature uh, like an angel. But he was and will be. Uh, so, so Jesus thrust in his sickle and that harvest, God only knows how many millions it will be. 
It'll be the greatest harvest in all of mankind. Uh, just a word to you. That, uh, there's some people that think that hell is going to have more people than heaven. Of course, that's not true. Uh, every infant on the face of this earth who dies as a baby goes to heaven. You see, well, if they grew up, they would be a pagan, but they didn't grow up, you see. You don't get to hell by accident. You have to go to hell because you rebel. And, and uh, I've talked to many, many pagans uh, all over the face of this earth. I have never talked to one yet that didn't know what was right. He had a conscience inside of him. I have never seen a pagan that if I said, is it all right for me to steal your coat? No, that's wrong. Well, that's what the book says. Shouldn't steal. You got a wife? Yeah. Is it all right for me to sleep with her tonight? No, it's not all right. How did you know? I don't know, but I do know that. It's in the book. Thou shalt not commit adultery. And so the world that has never heard of Christ is going to be judged by that thing inside of them for they rebelled against that built-in system of God of what is right and wrong. Are you here? There'll be no man standing before the judgment of God saying, I didn't know any better. There won't be any such thing. But then in the, in the, in the little ones, heaven will be enriched because of the billions of beautiful little ones that went to heaven. They never sinned. They just died before they knew what sin was all about. Left this planet Earth, starved to death or whatever, and, and uh, they belong in heaven. And all the people said, uh, jump down with me to Revelation 14, 6, and, and that he that sat upon the cloud thrust on his sickle to the earth, and the earth was reaped. In Matthew 13, 39, Jesus said, the harvest is the end of the world, and the reapers are the angels. And so he told them exactly what, what it all meant. And so we have this harvest in, in your next uh, line up there. I tell you the difference between the Jesus harvest and the angel harvest, which uh, has to do with, with, with sinners on, on the face of this earth. And so the, the, last, the last great reaping will take place, the two giant harvests on the face of this earth. I, I want to be ready uh, <laughs> for the first one. Uh, and the second one, we will be able to watch it possibly from heaven, but you won't be part of it because we don't belong to wrath. It says here, uh, it was a harvest of wrath, anger. All right, in Revelation 14, 20, and the wine press was trodden down throughout the city, and that's the 200 miles it's talking about. And it says that uh, no human can imagine uh, such a slaughter. The Antichrist will be leading the armies of hell, and Jesus will be leading the armies of heaven. And so those are the two last harvests of the book of the Revelation the harvest of God, and the harvest of evil. And man has to make his own decision. God will not make the decision as to who will be on which side. You have to make it. Oh, I know some people say, yes, but God predetermined before you were born, you know, he, he knew what you were going to do. His knowing truth does not influence your life. Are you here? His knowing truth. I might know that a six-year-old driving in a high-speed car will bring him down the road into disaster. I may know that, but that don't mean that I'm going to make him do it. Are you here? You have to go to hell of your own volition. You are not predetermined to go to hell because the Bible says God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to everlasting life. God wants us saved. Say saved. saved. He does not want anybody lost. And anyone, anyone that goes to hell has to go there by transgression. That means all idiots will go to heaven. They had no brain. They had no decision to make. And, 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 so, and so they have no right in hell. Or you say they didn't live right. They didn't have the capacity of living right. 
I'm here to tell you that God is a good God, and nobody's going to suffer because, just simply because God wants them to suffer. That is not true. You have to have in, within you the seeds of rebellion, saying, I hate God. I hate right. I hate the church. I hate the Bible. Those are the only people that will be there on the other side. <laughs> and I don't want to be there with them. They'll be cursing God for all of eternity, blaspheming Him. I want to be on the other side where they sing the songs of Zion. And when they sing about the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ that's taken away their sins and made them to be the sons and daughters of God. And all the people said, it's your choice. Make it right and make it good. Give the Lord a hand, everybody. So at the end of the world, there'll be two great harvests. Not speaking of grain, but speaking of immortal souls. The Jesus one and the devil one. We want to be on the right side. And all the people said, God bless you.